here's where I can see it's like um, almost the uncanny valley. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Term? Yeah. I think that's sort of what's happening here because you're pushing shapes up and down and stuff, but the level of rendering it is is like a bit photoreal. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I think the main issue is that it, it kind of goes back to this angle and how it relates to the, the mouth. Let me just do this. And so if I was to stylize this myself, I kind of did a version before, I'd probably make the eyes wider and, and the eyebrows as well. Wider and bigger here. You know, the extreme thing would be to take the nose and put it right there. Obviously that's way too high. And then making the mouth just like way big. In fact, I think that's what I'd want you to do as a practice so that we force that, that part of your brain that wants to make it realistic, you know, forced to break that. Right, because that looks ridiculous, obviously. But that's the kind of practice that I would recommend for, for more stylization. So having said that, when I look at this, like you can paint all the you know, facial features just fine. I, I've seen you do it and you're doing it here. But if I took this, made it higher and maybe even slightly smaller, I took the mouth, made it way bigger. Like it, it's, it's kind of goofy, obviously, but it starts to push and pull the proportions towards like more colorful, fun Pixar stylization, not Pixar, but like if you were to take this and crank it to 11, it would be more Pixar-y. But even doing that, it, it takes it out of this, the, the uncanny valley a little bit. I don't know if I could tell why, but if we compare, it's just something about it is, is off or in proportion. But aside from that, I think the, the other thing you can work on is like when you're stylizing or just painting in general, certain things that are not focal points can be, I guess, communicated with one brush stroke. And I think specifically this line there uh, right here. So what I would do is just make a, a brighter line and just do that. Like that's really all you need there. And then maybe blend it in a little bit like that. But we don't need to get into too much detail for stuff like that or to too dark and just use big strokes in these areas. Kind of like that. And, and just kind of go back to the same question. It's like these are the, are the important things. Everything else can just be literally brushed away like this with like kind of planes of the face defining brushwork. And it's like one way to try that is like zoom in and say, okay, well, I know there's a brush stroke here. Is it possible that I can communicate all this information with one stroke rather than that many? And you could do it with one stroke and it can be really big too, like that. Maybe add a bit of color and then fade out, right? So the more you simplify like this, the more stylized and, and appealing that it'll look. Make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Another way to think of it is uh, simplification. So for me, when I see that nose, all I'm seeing is a pink triangle. I'm obviously pu really pushing it. And then a little triangle of black here for the nostril, another one here, and a couple highlights. And then maybe go back over that with orange or something. And so, I mean, it might even help to practice solid round brush, so no opacity, yet like painting with something like that. And see if you can overlap and make form read like this. And then try that over here. I'm not going to use a solid brush, but yeah, that nose for me, I would just simplify into it. Very minimal brushwork. Right now it looks like a pig, sorry, but you get the idea. Any questions? Uh, no, I think that's pretty, pretty clear. I feel like a lot of this, I agree about the, all the small brushwork that was going on. I feel like a lot of it comes, the, the lighting situation. It's just not a real strong sense of direction for me. 
and it's I start noodling trying to figure out okay what's really happening with these like really subtle values yeah well when in doubt you can do this with the levels and use that as your reference because now it clarifies the value groups a little bit more clearly where the highlights are and how it's kind of layered on top of each other as solid you know strokes because without that you're right it's a very soft transition but with it it's like oh yeah now we know and that's actually more it's probably more fun to paint too so if we have that yellow color much like how i did that triangle with the nose just using these colors you know putting the, the features and whatnot but putting the highlights in and stuff right anyway when I simplified it, it took away from some of the disheveled wild look that the kind of like character mm. had. And so I'm curious how you would indicate that complex information without like rendering it all or having sure. it subtract from like the portrait. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, well, and I'll get to that. And I think I know how, how I can help. The first thing I do want to kind of just talk about is simplifying complexity. So the eyes, like, they're carrying that look of disheveledness. The information is there, the whites of the eyes, the eyelids and all that. Good. Um, but all of that can actually be done with, I guess, more simplification. So if I squint, I'm kind of seeing, let me just destroy yours for a second real quick. I'm kind of seeing uh, only like three or four major shapes. And that's going to be the uh, the eyelash this shape here on the for the whites of the eye a little bit there and a bit of green here and uh, the lower eyelid and then i can unsquint and like put some detail in there but before i do that for a more simplified look all this information i can kind of just merge together it doesn't have to be like super delineated because when it comes to stylization especially if you're going for the painterly look you can kind of just group things like this and the thing that will carry it because it's just kind of a sort of nondescript blobs of paint. But the thing that will carry it is the pupil or this part right here. And then as you have over there, the very sharp reflection of the eye. So you can see the difference. Like it's, it's more simplified. Uh, granted, it's not a perfect shape it's not um, accurate but it kind of allows the highlights to be the star of the show so if i move it it's it's not as strong whereas here it's kind of like it's hard to explain but i don't know if that's exactly the right solution or whatever but it's just how i would approach it and that's kind of like the same answer i'm going to give for like things like the shirt or the hair uh it's going to be like overall big like big shapes first and then you would kind of micro detail things N not too much okay Here's what I mean. So if we kind of just forget that this is a fur coat with hair on it for just a second, let's just take that. All right, let's let's rotate it again. We're forgetting whatever the heck it is. The thing is, like, if we just look at this as information, what we can say is, well, it's it's very busy. There's a lot of, you know, there's patterns happening. There's an abstraction of different shapes that are like interlocking. If we can find a way to mimic that feeling abstractly it'll sort of bypass our need to even be specific so how do you take this complex information because like you don't want to paint every single fur every single hair but how do we condense that into something basic so um, what you can do is treat it like an abstract painting so i'm not going to paint it exactly but for example for the fur if i just have like a, an area i know that it has some kind of overall gray you know color that is sort of a landscape but then you have these darker things coming in right because you have like the dark uh for well dark part of the fur that's kind of in shadow you could take that and just like sort of put it in a couple areas like this you don't have to do it everywhere just only a few because the abstraction when you zoom out is what's important so we simplify it like that and now we do the same thing with the highlight so I'm just looking at it and I'm sort of seeing how they clump together. Like look, notice that these have like these triangular but wisp-like shapes. So I'll zoom out. I'm, I'm actually also blurring and squinting my eyes when I'm doing this. And uh, so I'm just gonna loosely 
uh, replicate that look of those wisps and let it sort of have the pattern. Because there's also an abstract pattern happening where it's dark, light, dark, light. And if I squint, it's like a triangle of a cluster of them here, another cluster there. And that's sort of what I need to look for. So I'm going to get a cluster of them over here as well. And go a little darker with some of the base ones. Right. So now when we zoom out, it kind of looks like it's it's shiny fur. Let's rotate it like this or whatever. And we can use that to our advantage by tricking the brain to think there's more detail than there actually is. Much like how we did with the chainmail uh, earlier in the other crit. And then so the same thing with the hair. It's like, okay, what is it really? It's just, you know, rivers of red with some some highlights on it. So we can get that reddish orange. Get some nice shapes going across.